So we've seen lots of ways that we can use random numbers to generate shapes and color and positions on the screen. Um, but I wanted to show you a really classic use of this um, called Brownian motion. And we're actually seeing that now here on this intro. Um, and this is an idea that was first thought of in 1827 by a botanist named Robert Brown, who was looking at little tiny grains of pollen floating on the surface of a glass of water. And when he looked at a single grain, he would see um, that the motion, uh, you know, one step to the next kind of, was uh, random up, down, left to right, and then from there, random again and again and again, and formed what seemed to be this chaotic pattern, but was actually defined by this really simple idea. Um, now, we could spend a lot of time talking about Brownian motion, and scientists have studied this for a very, very long time. You can read more. I put a link to this Wikipedia article here where um, there's a ton of information. And folks have seen then Brownian motion exists in all kinds of places, including um, pollen or um, ant ants and um, you know bugs walking around and stuff like that. So I'll let you read more about that if you're interested. But speaking of ants, one of my very favorite kind of ideas from this is called Langton's ant. Um, this was uh, thought of by uh, Chris Langton in uh, 1986, and it describes this sort of hypothetical digital ant who um, at any moment is on a grid and at any moment the ant can choose to walk up, down, left or right. And depending on its position and a few other things will um, change the color of the pixel underneath. And what's super interesting is all of these crazy patterns that emerge. So seeming chaos and then bridges and tunnels and all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Um, and, you know, this really gets to something I think is really fascinating, um, the difference between randomness and order, chaos, entropy, um, a really complicated, really cool philosophical and scientific conversation. We can totally nerd out about that if you want to do that. But for now, let's go ahead and create this in P5.js. So I've got my um, canvas set up here. Um, let's go ahead and um, we need a variable to kind of define, well, okay, so if we have our uh, little piece of pollen or our ant or whatever, it's got an X, Y position. And each step of the way, we wanna move it by a certain amount. And it's gonna be random, left to right, up or down, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so we need to define that step size. And so I'm gonna call this speed. It's gonna be the distance it moves basically. And then uh, I'm gonna add no loop to my setup. Then for my, uh, I need some positional uh, variables. So I'm gonna create X and I'm gonna start in the middle of the screen. You could start this another spot and see what happens. And then I can, um, I wanna draw one big long line. And there's a couple ways that we could do this, but I think the easiest would be to use begin shape and end shape. Um, Cause if I use line, regular lines, then I have to keep track of the current position and the previous X, Y, and it just gets kind of messy. So I'm gonna change my stroke to be um, black and no fill. And then inside begin shape and end shape, I can have a for loop. And let's go, I don't know, 500 steps. Cool. So my X and Y starts in the center. So the first thing I want to do inside my loop is draw a vertex at X and Y. And then I want to update that position randomly. And there's a few different ways that we could do this. Uh, but let's start by just saying X plus equals random between negative speed and speed. So negative will move to the left, positive will move to the right. And we'll do the same for the Y. Now, if we run this, we get 500 steps where it starts in the center and it does all this crazy stuff and ends up in some random location. If I run it again, get a different result, keep going. Pretty cool. I love this. I think this is really great. Uh, if we increase the number of steps, it's gonna to start to spread out even more. Now, of course, the position, the X and Y can easily go way off the screen, you know, in one direction or the other. And so if you wanted to think about ways that you could constrain that so that it never gets too big, you could do an if statement for that. Or if you wanna have it wrap around 
back to the other side. I'll also let you think about how to add that here. Um, but there's a couple other things I think we can change that will make this look a little different. If instead of vertex xy, we did uh, curve vertex, it's gonna give us a really different result. Let me lower this a bit. This is gonna give us these weird twisty, almost like a piece of string dropped or a noodle or something like that. I really like the way this looks. I think this is really cool. But as we think about kind of like the visual uh, result of technical choices we make in our code, this has a really different look than the spikiness of this one. And maybe you prefer one or the other. Um, one more thing maybe we can try adding here. And that's right now it's going in a completely random sort of direction. Um, we could instead use if statements and uh, random choices like we did earlier to make it only go up or down or left or right. So for that, we could say if random zero to 100 uh, is less than 50. We, right now we can make it a 50-50 chance. Um, if it's less than 50, let's go left or right up or down. Now you could do another if statement here and you could do 50% chance up, 50% chance down. Um, let's try for now just x plus equals random negative speed speed. So now this is going to be a continuum. Um, the size of the step is going to vary between zero and in, you know no movement all the way to the maximum in either direction. Negative speed and speed. And so now it's always a 90 degree turn, right? Um, because it's only going up or down or left or right. But it's not moving by the same step amount. And maybe we like that, maybe we don't. So we could instead change this one more time and we could say if, so this is a nested if statement, if random 100 is less than 50, um, we'll move to the left, let's say. So um, x minus equals speed else x plus equals speed. And we could do the same thing for y. So we could say if random uh, y minus equals speed else y plus equals speed. Now it's always this perfect grid. It's like New York City. It's always on this grid. Um, it's going to double back on itself totally different look, even though it's the same idea of Brownian motion, just by changing these rules, we get a really different result. Um, and there's also no reason that we have to just do lines. So we could draw a vertex here, but we could also do, um, say, fill do a circle. Oh, 50 is going to be too big. And ah, that starts to get a little funky. We can, um, let's see. Oh, then maybe we could just reset. I'm trying to think here how we want to do this. We can do no fill stroke zero. Still, okay, so I'm, I'm going off script here and I'm just, I actually kind of like this. This is pretty cool. Um, but you know, yeah, you could think about different shapes that go in these places. Um, it doesn't have to just be lines and it starts to really change the kind of like visual look of this. So this is Brownian motion. Um, we could of course animate this and we're gonna do, I know I'm a broken record. We're gonna do lots of animation, I really promise. Um, but Brownian motion is a really classic idea. If you wanna read more about it, I definitely recommend starting with this Wikipedia article. Um, another thing that you could check out that's very similar is, um, I know I saw this link here, um, Langton's Ant, which is sort of inspired by this, is um, part of this idea called a cellular automaton. Um, Conway's Game of Life is a really classic example. These all build on each other to create really complex behaviors um, from very, very simple rules in the computer that mimic natural systems. So um, that's Brownie Motion, one of my very favorites.